All right, I want to bring someone to the stage right now. Uh, Dr. W uh, Walhall is the Deputy Health Commissioner for the State of Indiana Department of Health. She's also the Division Chief of Pediatric Emergency <coughs> Medicine at Riley Hospital for Children. She's an injury uh, prevention researcher using community-based uh, research to help people participate in certain organizations. Please welcome to the stage right now, Dr. Jennifer Walthall. Well, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Adams for uh, asking me to be the closer for our morning session today. It is an absolute pleasure to be here in front of all of you who do this work every single day. Uh, today is my one year anniversary on the job as Deputy Health Commissioner, and this was my very first event to attend last year when I started this role. And it's really incredible just in one year how this has become, the people in this room have become family. And the work that we are doing together, we're starting to see some momentum and some outcomes. And so I'd like to talk about uh, what we've talked about. My dad is a farmer, and uh, he says that you, to, in order to have a successful meeting or a success of anything, you have to say what you're gonna say, and then say it, and then tell them what you said. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I think. Great. So what we said was that we have an infant mortality problem in the state of Indiana, and it is more uh, profound when we look at the health disparities within our state. There are several buckets that we need to look at for causes of infant mortality, and the biggest one is perinatal risk. And so when we're trying to think about where do we need to focus our efforts, where do we need to put our minds together, our resources together, our groups together, we need to think about surrounding moms, dads, and babies and communities for making safe pregnancy, safe delivery, and safe immediate postpartum spaces. We also need to look next at congenital malformations, sudden unexplained infant death syndrome, and then injuries, assaults, and accidents. When we look at our biggest bucket, it's very important that we look at where we rank in our biggest bucket for race and ethnicity for the state of Indiana, and that is perinatal uh, care. And one of those biggest predictors is preterm births, and we have a long way to go. We have made some great strides in the last several years in preterm births, but we still rank number 41 in the country as of yesterday for March of Dimes for preterm births for the state of Indiana. We also, in our health disparities, can break things out specifically by uh, race and ethnicity. We know that our uh, black moms in the state of Indiana have uh, not enough prenatal care and we need to make that access available for them in a way that is meaningful and we need to encourage breastfeeding. These two factors are incredibly important as we move forward. Additionally, we have disparities in a percentage of low birth weight babies and percentage of preterm infants and increasing access to quality prenatal care is a great way that we can quantify how we improve this for our uh, black moms in the state of Indiana. We have a comprehensive plan that's been in place for a very long time. This work didn't start in 2013 when we, ISDH made this our number one priority. It started a long time ago, 100 years ago plus, when we started keeping these statistics in the United States. So this is not a new problem, but it's a new awareness. And so all of you know the work that's being done. And what we need to do and what we've been doing through summits like this is bringing the collective voice together so that we can do it together. And we can do it in harmony and with synchrony around data and around passion and bringing those things together. So some of the things that are on our list of our big hairy goals are that we need to identify at-risk moms earlier so that we can get them connected to care, not in the healthcare model as we have outgrown, as was said so eloquently here on the stage, but in a more population health-based model that is community-centric and family-centric. By connecting women to care, we can improve their outcomes. And uh, we need to connect on their terms, not on our terms. We need to make sure that the quality doesn't have gaps. It turns out that our uh, infant mortality rate for the state of Indiana for uh, white women is incredible. So how do we replicate what we're doing right in one population across all populations and improve access? We need to have early detection and referral for congenital anomalies. 21% of our infant mortality is from congenital anomalies. And our medicine and our, our impacts are, are much better than that. So early detection and referral for moms who are carrying fetuses with con congenital anomalies to improve their outcomes. We need to be more connected for perinatal care so that hospitals know how to access higher levels of care and then 
hospitals that do high levels of care can send babies back, to, back home so that they can finish out their uh, high risk care when they're better and healthy, closer to home, to make it easier for families. And then we need to have postpartum wraparound services and education for young moms and young dads and young families in their community so that they can have, you know, carry that kid to the end of their first year of life and beyond. With all of these things said, these are not new ideas. So we don't necessarily need to reinvent the wheel or build a whole bunch of new programs. So new is not necessarily better, but better is better. So if we can do something and it improves our outcomes, let's keep doing it. Let's make it bigger. Let's stop doing pilot programs and demonstration projects all the time. Let's take those things that work and then take them to scale. So why is this now? Why are we talking about this now? Why do we have 700 people in a room talking about infant mortality when people have been slogging away for years and staking their careers on this? And it's because we have momentum. Look at the people that we've had here today. Look at all of the people who are thinking about infant mortality. It is the window to the soul of the health of our state. If we can protect this population, we can protect others as well. If we can figure out infant mortality, which is you know, the number one, uh, it, it just breaks your heart as you think about losing these young vulnerable populations. But if we can figure out this big problem, then we can figure out our smaller problems as well. We have many intervention models that we've used at the Indiana State Department of Health using many incredible partners to look at our infant mortality data and really drill it down. And we know that we have specific buckets of impact that are going to have the highest uh, long-term outcome, and we want to use our resources wisely in those areas. And using this um, perinatal periods of risk model, we can use our resources in places where we are really going to look at the most preventable deaths. A couple of examples of where this might be are looking at excess deaths. In non-Hispanic blacks, we have excess deaths in sudden unexplained infant death syndrome. We know that we have a lot of work to do here. We know that we have a lot of work to do in increasing access to care. So our foundation statements as we move forward is that we have to improve our service delivery across vulnerable populations and across all health disparities, not just race and ethnicity. We need to think about alternate and coordinated healthcare models that go to populations where they are. We need to look at outcome measurements when we do those service delivery changes so that we know that what we're doing isn't because we think it's a good idea, but because it is a good idea. And then we need to replicate quality across populations. So we're done, right? We've got it all figured out and we're gonna hit the easy button. And then our you know, 2016 data and a, you know, 2019 when we see that, we're gonna say we did the right thing and we got it all taken care of. And it turns out that that's not necessarily the case but we do know a lot more now than we ever have before. We have data about where our impact buckets are, and we have data about where geographically we need to go with our biggest resource dollars. So what do we do? We deliver high quality prenatal care. We eliminate gaps in service delivery. We facilitate breastfeeding. We support smoking cessation, and we focus on our work in safe sleep. We do this through education, we do it through outreach, we do it through building systems, we do it through building communities. We get out of the hospital and we do our work in places that we've never thought about doing work before. We build family-centric services around moms, dads, extended families, workplaces, wellness programs, community groups, faith-based organizations, everybody's on the table. We build our environments around healthy families. We think about streets and we think about safe spaces and we think about how do I get to the doctor's office or how does the doctor get to me? We think about connectivity through technology integration and we make reimbursement models that work for providers and families as well. So our high level closing thoughts as we take the morning away and hear some wonderful singers in just a moment and have a great lunch. Indiana has a health disparity gap. It manifests itself very powerfully in our infant mortality problem. Poverty takes priority and disrupts engagement. We've heard that theme throughout the morning. We've also heard that place matters. 
and so does the labeling of those places that goes with it. And as long as we carry those labels internally, we are never gonna bridge that gap between us versus them. And us versus them destroys the fabric of our society and manifests itself with unneeded death. And then, repeat after me, we've heard this multiple times with our speakers, health disparities exist. And then we've also heard that technology can connect us. We also heard from Dr. Werner that consumer-driven healthcare puts power back in the hands of the vulnerable and that success is the best weapon to beget future success. And we have to start with early successes in order to get the next ones. So I've been tweeting all morning. This is my favorite thing to do. It keeps me awake during conferences because I pretty much am driven by pacing and caffeine. So if you make me sit down, I've got to do something else. So here's some quotes from our Twitter feed this morning that have been fun. If this were Ellen or Oprah, everyone would be getting a copy. <laughs> Butchers, bakers, and candlestick makers must make the meal together. I thought that was really fantastic. We are connected. So why the heck are we not connected? Get, let's use the connectivity that we have to be connected. I like Jen's new boots. <laughs> Stigma suggests to many that those who are vulnerable do not care about their health. We have a lot of things to think about. So many wonderful pearls from our speakers today and really just incredible food for thought to take us home uh, this afternoon to our sessions. So I had the easy button on an earlier slide and it turns out that that's not the case at all. It's supposed to be hard. If it wasn't hard, everyone would do it. The hard is what makes it great. This is your call to action today. And in closing, I'd like to extend our gratitude to Tina Mahern, who she has uh, been an extraordinary organizer for this event. Just a really, really amazing woman. Also, our thanks to Governor Pence and the First Lady. The First Lady has been our spokesperson for the Labor of Love campaign, and she is committed to this work and is just an incredibly articulate spokesperson for us. Dr. Adams, of course, for his leadership as we've taken on infant mortality as the number one priority for ISDH. The work of IPQIC, the Perinatal Quality Collaborative, in really looking at the data surrounding infant mortality and helping drive us forward using data that will help us do the right thing. And then, of course, all of the folks at the staff of ISDH who have been on the planning team uh, for this event today. We are grateful for them. One of the things that you can think about taking home with you today is something that will not have delayed impact, but will have impact right now, and that is the new Healthy Hoosier Foundation, which was just announced uh, a few short months ago. It's a way to contribute to these initiatives and taking things out of pilot phase and demonstration phase and to scale, uh, giving uh, a nimble product to the programs that are supported by Indiana State Department of Health. Infant mortality is the number one inaugural priority of the Health Healthy Hoosier Foundation, and I've included the website here for your support if your organization or you personally are interested in donating to that cause. Finally, let's remember our mission. One of my healthcare heroes, Don Berwick, says, I think healthcare is more about love than about most other things. If there isn't at the core of this two human beings who have agreed to be in a relationship where one is trying to help relieve the suffering of another, which is love, you can't get to the right answer here. And with that, I hope that you take with you this labor of love to this afternoon and to the rest of your amazing work that you're doing uh, every day. Thank you.